everyone, it's Jacqueline here and Lisa. Hey, so we are in the shop and we thought we'd take the opportunity to talk to you guys about paint brushes. We have all different types and styles. Uh, obviously we are a DIY store, uh, but we also love to refinish furniture. So we have the gamut of all the brushes here. Um, we're gonna start off with brushes that you can get almost anywhere. These are our foam brush kits. Our foam brush kits do come with sandpaper here, but those are great for your quick DIY project. Uh, something that you think you want to give it a try once. Um, foam brushes don't generally last very long, so they're great for one project. And you can discard them when you're finished. Um, they do have a little bit more use in it than just one project, but of course that's up to you. Um, in temperatures like this where it's super hot outside, Lisa's going to go grab the foam. Uh, if the paint dries too long on these brushes, then they're pretty much toast, so they won't um, last any longer than one project if you don't take care of them. Um, we also have our one inch brushes and our two inch brushes. Now these are our bristle brushes that are very easy to clean. Um, they have multiple uses and these are what we used as our workshop brushes. So uh, again, um, great for some smaller projects. We are painting these little yo-yos here. So um, that is a great use for those. Um, we also have our larger signs and this is great for our two inch brush. Um, as you can see, it covers a nice surface area and great for doing edges and any little projects for that as well. Oh yeah, there will be. Then we have our premium paintbrush kit. Yeah. Um, that is a kit with all different sizes of brushes, and of course it's great for little oh, intricate yeah. projects. Whoops, like our DIY tier tray oh, kit. Um, these are perfect. You can get multiple uses out of these. They do have some fine tips and some flat points. Um, and again, those are great for projects that are around this size, easy to base coat, um, and lots of wear in these, which is great. So easy to clean up with acrylic paints with just soap and water. Uh, and the nice part about yeah. these two is they're all a really good price point. They range yeah, yeah, from $3 to $6. Uh, again, just great for crafting. And then we're going to get into more of the furniture refinishing brushes that we carry. Uh, and again, if you're watching, just let us know where you're watching from. Uh, and if you have any questions about brushes or how to care for them, uh, feel free to ask us as well. Paula says the premium kit is the best ever. Oh, Paula. How's it going, Paula? brush set. Um, we're super pleased with the quality. They're perfect for our DIY kits. Uh, and some of our kits come with the foam brushes, but you can of course upgrade and buy the premium brush kit separately. So that is a choice that you can make depending on what kind of crafter you are. Uh, and if you think you have other projects at home that you can tackle with those too. Um, Lisa, welcome back. I don't know what it is. <laughs> It's okay. Uh, so we have some viewers here online that we are just showcasing some of our brushes. Um, do you want to just kind of share what style zebra brushes we have? Yes. Okay. Unfortunately, we do not have the Palm Pro, which is the number one. I know. We're it's, still out of stock. Yes. Still out of stock. It's going to be a couple of months, but any of these brushes are great middle of the road brushes. Everybody loves these. These are flying out of here and they're a great price point as well. They're $16 and you can use them on any project. They're great. So some of the smaller brushes here, we've got the square one inch. That one is perfect for any furniture refinishing projects that have spindles, table legs, uh, chair legs. Yes. Else can you think of? And it does a great brush. Um, you never want to overload your brushes with too much paint, um, especially when you're using fusion mineral paint, just because you don't need all that excess. What will happen is the paint will just dry excessively on your project and then you'll get those paint lines in it. So I think that's a little bit of a myth about brushes too, is that 
Um, some brushes do help to eliminate brush strokes, but when you're using too much paint, um, that can also be a hindrance in the quality of your paint work as well. That's right. Yeah. Um, do you want to show them the difference on the angle brushes with the handle? Yes. One is long and one is short. And these are great because they fit right in the Fusion paint containers. So it's perfect for dipping and it's great angle brush for trim or round door trims or like really any project. Yeah. I love these brushes. Uh, this time of year, especially people are repainting their front doors. So that's great with anything with a panel, mm -hmm. uh, anything with a uh, raised edge, uh, actually, which we, you can actually roller too. So we do have paint roller kits mm -hmm. here as well with the tray. So that's super helpful on projects like that. Um, Paula is wondering what the round brushes are for. Yeah, so these round brushes, should I talk about that or do you want to talk about that? They're, they're our favorite. <laughs> we recommend these ones yeah. over anything. This yeah. one, I use it to absolutely everything. My front door, I did my island, I did my bathroom cupboards, my back door. This brush is a great brush. It gets into like any groove. Plus, it doesn't leave any streaks at all, and it fits perfectly in the jar, which everyone loves. And it's a great brush. And when you have a good brush, you have great projects when you're finished, right? Yeah, so the quality of the brush does matter, um, as well as how you're using the paint. So the other thing with this brush that you might notice is that it has that green string around the edge. Please do not cut that off. That actually holds the brush brush bristles really taut. <laughs> I know, say that too many times. Uh, and it keeps the bristles just really in check so that they don't fan out, which you can see in some low quality brushes. Uh, and the roundness of the brush also holds the paint in. So you don't need to be re-dipping into the paint constantly, which is just a really nice way actually to extend the use of your fusion mineral paint as well because a very little amount of paint goes a really really long way um, which is hard to do with some of these angled brushes because sometimes you can get extra dripping on the tips when you're using paint um, because of the round edge um, it can be i guess a little trickier with the edges um, but it also you don't get those grit marks when you're going around say um, a table leg or anything it just it moves the paint beautifully. Yeah. Paul is wondering if the round brushes are comfortable to use. Yeah. Of course. So they do have the long handle. I do find that I hold almost like the I tip of the too. brush. Like, like, that? A, like a brush. Like almost a pen. Like, almost like yeah. a pen. Um, it does have the long handle and it has this little hole on the end too. So that when you are cleaning your brush, you can have like a little S hook and it can just hang to dry. I tend to put my brushes in <laughs> upright. Upright in a mason jar. That's what yeah. she meant by that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a holiday it's here tomorrow. Like <laughs> it feels like a Friday to us. Yeah. I have small hands, like extremely small hands, Paula. Oh, and Mary, <laughs> I love this brush. This is a fantastic brush. I know you're starting to get into painting more stuff, and you'll love it. It is a great brush. Did you talk about our two inch, our new two inch? Yeah, yeah. yeah. These um, are great too, Paul. Okay, so like the these. difference in the quality of the brush, this is a $16 brush, this is a $36.99 brush. Now that's Canadian pricing, Paula. Um, <laughs> so there is a difference in the quality of the brush um, and the price point. So the better quality brush, it is more expensive, but you'll find you'll get better results with this brush. Not to say that you can't get good results with this, you just have to be a little bit more mindful. And as you can see, it doesn't have that extra added quality of the string around it. So this one might fan out a little bit more. This you'll get so many uses. We have Forever. Um, furniture refinishing companies um, that do have we're doing that. I'm speaking away again. Oh, we have customers coming in the store. Um, we have some bigger brushes as well, a little bit wider, so you can see that these definitely have a different purpose. This Stylemeister brush is made in Germany. Um, actually, these three here, you can see that they all have the same color bristle. Um, this is, I'm going to say it's three inches. I think it may be three and a half inches. 
It is the Cadillac of all paintbrushes. So if you're doing a tabletop, if you're doing any top coat finishing that you want super, super smooth, um, definitely worth the investment. Um, it does a top coat like nothing I've ever used before. And as you can see, it's really thin. So with top coats, you don't want to add excess um, of paint or of the clear coats. So it's perfect for that because it holds just the right amount of paint. Um, and again, this brush also holds a ton of paint. Uh, super thick bristles. Um, and this is amazing for really big projects. So some of our customers might come in asking for milk paint. Um, we do have milk paint. We have a limited supply of that. Um, if you do have it, it's perfect for floors. So you can see that you can cover a really large surface area if you do that rustic charm um, with the milk paint and just a fun. You can also do texture on walls with this brush as well. So with the with <laughs> the big daddy, I like that. So if you're looking to do any etching or denim look with your paint, you can do crisscross or side to side striations. It gives it. Um, if you do a double layer, you can put crisscross so you see the under layer with your top coat. Anyways, lots of different ways that you can use this brush. But again, this is a $45 brush. Um, and again, it's meant for that um, type of larger project on walls or on floors. Did you talk about painting in heat? I did not. Do you want to say a few things? Yes. <laughs> in BC, we are having a heat wave. I'm sure you've all heard about it. Uh, we do not recommend painting in hot weather. It is too hot. Your paint dries too fast. You're gonna have streaks on your project. Don't do it. Just wait. Wait for a bad day. Go read a book. Go for a walk. Go for a swim. Yeah. Yes. Hit the water. Anything. Even any project you do, your paint needs to dry. Like give it time, and you need to paint when it's not hot. Yeah. So the ideal temperatures for painting, um, definitely over 30 degrees is too, too hot. Um, and you don't want to get below 10 degrees either because the paint just won't cure properly. So in the winter, you're not going to want to work in your garage where it's not insulated. Um, also in the summer when the temperatures are extreme, um, just the way that the paint will evaporate and cure is definitely different. So it is, um, usually BC is fine year round to paint with, but with this extreme heat, um, just wait a couple of days. You're gonna find that you use less paint in the right heat, um, and you won't get any funny crackling or uh, striations or streaks in your paint too. Or peeling, right? Oh, peeling, yeah. yeah. And that comes with the prep work too. Mm -hmm. So, what else do we got here? I don't know. I think that we have the care of your paintbrushes. Oh, number one. <laughs> so best product, best product we carry. It's right? um, an added product that I think a lot of people don't think they need, but once they start using it, they'll find just the quality and how they care for their brushes is so important. You want to tell them how to do it? Yeah, I love this. This is my favorite. Paula, you, I'm talking to you. <laughs> okay, it is like hair conditioner. You painted your project. Yeah. You, you got like, you sitting for a second and you're like, oh wait, I can't keep paint on my brush longer than 10 minutes, right? Because yeah, like 15 minutes is a long day. Yes, you want to rinse your brush clean so it looks like it's clear. So it could be like 10 minutes, right? Like washing and kind of rinsing it out, you know, kind of pinching it down, making sure that you are rinsing all the paint out. Then the magic happens. You take this little baby here, squeeze a little dime in your hand. Yeah, and it's a gel. It's like a gel case. You don't need, you don't even need very much. It's like hair conditioner, and you're gonna lather it into your brush like shampoo, and then you're gonna rinse it, and the rest of the paint comes out. It is amazing. And yeah, that's the thing with these brown brushes, especially, is because the brushes hold so much paint. paint. 
I'm sure you've all experienced this where you think you've washed the paintbrush well and then it's all crispy and crunchy the next day because it's dry and that's just because you haven't rinsed it out properly. So anytime um, you use a brush cleaner, do make sure you rinse your brush clear with water like Lisa was explaining and then give it a good cleaning. This conditioner, I mean, I can't imagine not using hair conditioner yeah. in my hair. My hair would be like straw. It's the same thing with the brushes. So if you're going to be uh, continually using your brush for multiple projects and you want the same finish, um, definitely invest in the money for the brush cleaner. And this can work on our craft brushes too. It does. Right? We do use this on our craft yes. brushes all yep. the time. And it keeps your brushes soft and supple and good for like, any craft project, yeah. really. Like, I and know it, when I've used brushes in the past before, I knew any better. I used to get these little dried up chunks that get stuck in the side and bristles of the brush. Mm -hmm. And then, then you go to paint again, and those little chunks actually put the streak marks in your paint yeah. because it's it's just a rough looking brush. So definitely cleaning your brushes properly, super important. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe we'll do a demo on how to do that. We can do that another time. So I hope this has been some little tips on how to care for your brushes and what brushes to use for what project. And I don't think we forgot anything. No, nope. besides showing you what the Palm Pro looks like, um, we care the Zebra brushes, the Stalemeister brushes, and our DIY premium craft brushes mm -hmm. in stock. So check out our website or come on in the store. I mean, we are closed tomorrow for Canada Day and you can check out our website. Yes.